All right, we're back, we're fresh, we're ready to go. Let's get into the tips and tricks for why Media Encoder is good. We'll look at the big ones first, and then we'll get into some of the more less known tips and tricks to help you with your workflow. So the four big ones uh, for Media Encoder is I can grab a bunch of different sequences and export them all at the same time. Right click, export media, or use our shortcut, Command M. Decide on your preferred output. Let's queue them up. Media Encoder has got them all ready to go. That brings us to reason number two why it's so awesome is I can hit play and it will run through all of these in order. I can go to bed, I can have hundreds of them in here and I can go to sleep finally, okay, and it'll plot its way through them all. Excellent. Reason number three is that the sequence here, I can export to Media Encoder and I can say queue it up, okay, and I can actually run not just one version, okay, I'm gonna use my adaptive high but I can actually output another couple of versions, one high, one low, maybe some other format. Hit play and look, the run concurrently, fancy. I bet you you're like, huh, you can do that? <laughs> You've been duplicating them, right? Copy paste, different versions, and that works, but oh, imagine if they could run concurrently rather than at separate little steps. It's heaps faster and a lot of the time that's what we're doing, high low res versions. All right, reason number four. And four is while this thing is running, I can be working still in Premiere Pro. It still works, okay? I can be doing stuff in Premiere Pro while Media Encoder does its busy work in the background. All right, so those are the four main reasons. Let's jump into some of the more kind of useful tips for Media Encoder that you may or may not know. So the first tip is I'm gonna send lots of things to the Media Encoder. Okay, right click, export media, send them all over. You can actually change them all in bulk while you're in Media Encoder. Let's jump over there, here it comes. I do this most often with the output name, so drag a box around them all. Okay, or hit Command A on a Mac, Control A on a PC, and you can say, actually, I want you all to be, just click on one of them, and you can say, actually, I want to put them all on the desktop. I'm going to go into my uh, socials folder. Okay, click Choose, and they all change. Same with this. If you want to go through and say, actually, they all need to be something else, you can all select it and all changed at once. With all these versions selected, we can do that thing again where we say Add Output. Rather than add a new source, Okay, or duplicating it, which is this one here, we wanna say add a new source, and they all get this other source. And I can say you, you, I'm holding down the command key on my Mac, control key on a PC, just to select the second ones here, and actually I wanna click on one of them. Okay, actually let's do the drop down here and say I want one of them to be the low bit rate. So we're all gonna have a medium and a low. Next tip is, do you know you can reorder them? You can say actually I want this one first, because that's the one I need to send to the client this morning, and Oh, I dragged it down. <laughs> okay, this one, the multi one is the one that's got, you know, needs to go to the client first. Okay, so you can drag them around, drag the order. You can do it while it's playing. Look, it's busy throwing this, and you're like, actually, no, this one needs to go next. Okay, tips number next ones. Okay, maybe three. You can pause them. You can say, hey, actually, pause that because my machine's about to melt through the ground and I need to do something in After Effects or Photoshop, and I can come back to it in a second. Hit play again. Tip four, it might be working, you might be like, actually, can we just skip that high res ones? I'm not sure why you would, but you can skip them. There you go, skip these guys, please. I don't know why, <laughs> but you can. Let's pause it again. You can send media encoder just bits. Let's say you only need this intro here, in point, which is my I key on my keyboard, set my out point. It might be a really big intro, something a bit fancier than this, but if I hit my Command M, Control M on a PC, it will set just the in and out point, and I can render just this. You can overwrite it in here to say, actually, just do the entire sequence, please. Likewise, you can do it the opposite way. You've got no in and out points. Okay, you've got this big project you're exporting. Clear the in and outs. Okay, I'm gonna send it over. And actually in here you can say, I just want this section here that needs reviewing with a logo reveal. I can cue this one. Okay, and in here I can say, actually, let's, let's duplicate it different from adding a different kind of output, because in this one, I wanna go in and actually do a different part. I want to maybe break it into sections. Okay, so I'm gonna export just that part. Other weird thing you might've seen in there, uh, custom, so entire sequence, in and out makes sense. What the hell's work area? Does anybody, if you're old school, you'd be like, I know what work area is. Do you remember that? Tiny bit of digression, but if you do want it back, 
it used to be along the top here forever. Okay, you can turn it back on on your timeline by going to here, work area. If you have no idea what the work area is for, yeah, it was a way that you could say actually just, it's like an in and out point, but it was just, it was back when computers were really, really slow dealing with video. Okay, and you could render just this little part here. Anyway, nobody uses it anymore. You might love it, but that's where it went. Last little tip is that when you are encoding, okay, let me get a few of these going. That is a ridiculous cue. Okay, but watch what happens. I'm gonna make this smaller. This smaller so you can see it. Did you know that if I start rendering and in Premiere Pro, I start playing, watch it actually, it's queuing up. Oh, it's going pretty fast. <laughs> Slow down. If I hit play over here, watch what happens over in this side. So I'm trying to play Premiere Pro. May the road rise see what happened? to meet you. It paused. Did you know that happened? I undo it. It starts going again. Play May again. The wind it pauses. At your back. Okay, I'm going to pause that. Pause, please. Why does that happen? It's so that it kind of gives Premiere Pro some resources. Uh, Media Encoder wants all of your system resources to do the encoding as fast as it can. That's its job, okay? Premiere Pro wants all the resources to try and play back the video. So what it does by default is that it actually pauses your render while you're playing back, which is not a big deal, unless it is a big deal for you. Uh, if it is, you can go and turn it off. It's in Media Encoder. I'm gonna go to, remember on a Mac, it's under, sorry. Remember on a PC, it's under Edit, and your preferences will be down there. On a Mac, it's under Media Encoder, Preferences, and it's in here somewhere. Somewhere here. <laughs> it's not in here at all. It's in Premiere Pro. Okay, Premiere Pro, Preferences, Playback. I want to say playback. There it is there. Pause media encoder during queuing, oh, the media encoder queue during playback. You can turn that off if you want. But Premiere Pro will struggle to play. Up to you. All right, so those are the kind of like light and breezy tips and tricks for media encoder. Um, I'm going to separate the kind of bigger ones into separate videos now, but hopefully there was something useful in those little fly through. But the one thing you might know or notice during this course is that media encoder looks a lot like Premiere Pro, so especially in this kind of like export settings. So a lot of the features that we're gonna cover in a second are kind of, you could get to via Premiere Pro without ever opening or installing Media Encoder. Actually, you probably need it installed, but you don't have to send it to Media Encoder to get the benefits. It's just, I've put them in the Media Encoder section because they make more sense when you're doing a lot of this repetitive stuff, which is what Media Encoder is really good for. All right, let's get on to those videos. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you do wanna go further with Premiere Pro, you might wanna join me for my larger courses, okay, called Premiere Pro Essentials and Premiere Pro Advanced. There'll be links for both of those in the description. Hope to see you in the course. Bye.